and friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life. I do lots of thrifting, upcycling, repurposing, and DIY content. Love to have you follow along. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any great DIY content. Last week, I did a tutorial on my best selling item. I did a step-by-step -step tutorial of how you can create cutting boards or breadboards, and they sell like hotcakes. As soon as I make them, they're gone. And you can just stain them, put a little hanger on them, and they sell really, really well. But I also like to add graphics on them, do different painting techniques. So today's tutorial, I took a whole bunch of those cutting boards that I made and did a whole bunch of different techniques so I could show you. And you can maybe get inspired uh, to try some of these yourself. So we got all kinds of work. Let's get started. If you haven't seen the last video that I did on how to make these cutting boards, I'll put the link down below in the description and you check it out. It's really easy to do. And like I said, they sell really well. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to paint with my homemade black chalk paint. Gonna give it a really good coat and then let it dry. Now I'm gonna add some of this beautiful yellow chalk paint. I just want it as a contrast color because I'm gonna do a crackling technique and I want that yellow and the black to peek through. We're gonna do the hairspray method. If you haven't tried this, you need to try. It gives it a real kind of light crackling. It's not like the Elmer's glue where you have a really thick crackle. This is more of a natural fine crackle and it's really easy. You spray on the hairspray, let it dry, and then you paint acrylic paint on top of it. And as you dry it, those crackles will appear. I have a full tutorial on that too. Again, it'll be down in the description. Now this is completely dry, and as you can see, all those little crackles. It leaves a really fantastic surface for you to do your signs on or any of your DIY projects. I have this fabulous farmhouse theme graphic that I'm gonna put on using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Using my Mod Podge mat, I'm going to put a light coat over that whole paper and then put it on my project and let it sit for 24 hours until it's completely dry. This is just done on regular computer paper on my laser jet printer. All the graphics that I'm using today on all my projects are available in my Etsy store. If you wanna use any, make sure you use the code SAVE50 and one of the files is already reversed so you're ready to go. And then I'm gonna seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer. Now I am a collector of bits and pieces, never throw anything away. This was in my stash. I actually have no idea even what it is, but I thought it looked really pretty on this sign. So I'm gonna glue it down with some E6000, finish this cutting board off beautifully. I love it. Now let's get started on the next cutting board. Another coat of that black homemade chalk paint as my base coat. Whenever I'm doing projects like this, I always like a darker base coat. I think it peeks through nice when you're distressing it. I'm gonna use some candle wax. This is just a pillar candle from the dollar store. Anywhere where you put wax, that paint is not going to adhere very well and stick. So when you sand it down, it will leave that rustic look. This one, I'm gonna put a ticking stripe on it. Just kind of creating a stencil with some painter's tape and put a nice stripe down the middle of this cutting board. This is a really easy technique. Anybody can do it just with some painter's tape and some black chalk paint and create a really fun farmhouse cutting board. Just make sure you have your tape on straight and you've measured it and it'll turn out perfect. And I love peeling off that tape after it's all dried and leaving a nice crisp line on your project. We're gonna seal it up with some water-based polyacrylic sealer and such a simple technique, but it creates a really pretty cutting board. On to the next one. This is a longer one and I love making them a little bit longer. Again, we're putting on that black chalk paint as our base and I had some spindles in my shed. I cut them down and turned them into feet and I'm gonna turn this into a centerpiece for a table. I'm gonna paint all those legs with that black homemade chalk paint so it'll match the cutting board. And then I'm going to glue them on to the back of the board using some E6000. 
I'm also gonna add a little bit of hot glue so I can keep them in place and they won't move around. Because this is gonna be on a kitchen table, I'm gonna seal it really well with a couple coats of that polyacrylic sealer and love the way that it turned out. And those little legs from the spindles just finished it off perfectly. So many ideas you can do with these cutting boards. Next one, again, we're putting on that base of that black homemade chalk paint. And I am going to print on fabric. If you haven't seen that tutorial, make sure you check that out. I'll put the link down below in the description. It's a really fun tutorial where you can take a piece of fabric and put it through your printer and actually print right on the fabric and then use it for any of your DIY projects. I'm gonna create a little pocket for this cutting board that we can put some flowers in and it's gonna look adorable. I'm gonna use some fabric glue to glue the sides in and the bottom and fold over the top so we can create that pocket. And then I'm gonna hot glue it onto the cutting board. This was just a piece of a old pillowcase that I had thrifted quite a while ago from the thrift store that I'm using to create this little pocket. And I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun and glue that fabric onto that cutting board. And there we have an adorable cutting board with a little fabric pocket that you can put some faux flowers or some dried flowers in. I love it. So hang in there with me. I have so many different ideas of what you can do with these cutting boards. The next one, I've mixed up some of my homemade stain. I have a full tutorial on how to make that. I'll list it down below in the description. But I just kind of want to give this a little bit of an aged wood look. I love this coffee house uh, graphic and I'm going to use the polyacrylic sealer to do the transfer method with. This works good if you want to use raw wood or you want to have that wood color underneath. I find when you use the Mod Podge on raw wood you can kind of see the outline with of it and the polyacrylic you don't see that as much. It doesn't transfer as well sometimes so we're going to see how it works out but I want to keep that wood look underneath that graphic. I'm just applying the polyacrylic sealer, it's the water-based, right onto that graphic. We're going to center it onto our project, make sure it's right where we want it, and then set it aside and let it dry completely. Now that it's all dry, it works the exact same as the Mod Podge transfer. Just take a little bit of water, dampen it until you can start to see the graphics, and then rub the paper off. Now this thing started to give me a little bit of a headache and the graphics were starting to rub off. That's what I said, sometimes it can be a little bit fussy, but once I got it done, I actually loved it. I think it turned out really rustic and really chippy looking. I'm gonna seal it up and keep it as is. I love this one. I think this one's gonna stay in my house, in my kitchen. Even for it turning out really rustic and chippy and some of the graphics rubbing off, love the effect of it. This is one of the cutting boards that I stained in my first video just with that dark black color. And I'm just gonna put a stencil in the corner of it. This looks really pretty when you have an, a stencil just kind of offset on the cutting boards. And I'm just using my white chalk paint on this stencil and peeling it off and look how pretty that is. Kind of has a boho vibe to it. Seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer. I love it. I'm trying to decide how I can keep all of these because how many cutting boards do you actually need in your house? Next one, I painted with this rust color and really distressed it. And then I took one of my wooden bowls that I had and I cut it in half. And now I'm going to glue it onto that cutting board. And once it's dry, you can fill it up with a faux flower. You can put some utensils in it. You can fill it up with all kinds of different things and display it anywhere in your home and it looks really pretty. So we're going to hot glue these with and some E6000, set it aside and let it dry completely. I cut this bowl on my chop saw but you could also do it on your table saw and it would work perfect to cut them in half. I put a few of my dried hydrangeas in it and I think it looks beautiful. Okay, so this board I had already painted and I used the candle wax method to make it nice and chippy and 
rustic. I have this beautiful flower market graphic that I'm gonna put on the top of it. We've let it dry completely. I'm gonna rub the paper off. We're gonna be left with a really pretty graphic. And then I am going to put the polyacrylic sealer on and I'd like to hang a little glass jar from the bottom, but I had this little, I'm not even sure what it was, in my stash, once again, I never throw anything out, and I thought it would be a good hanger for this instant coffee glass jar. I've cleaned it all off, taken the labels off, and I'm going to attach it onto that little metal embellishment and hang the jar from it. I'm gonna hot glue the little hanger onto the rim of the glass jar and then wrap some twine around it so it looks nice and pretty. And I had some faux flowers that I picked up at the thrift store not that long ago and I thought that would be perfect for this cutting board. I put a little bit of moss in the bottom of that glass jar so it looks like it's a vase full of flowers. Next cutting board, I just wanted to kind of fool around with some different colored stains. I tried this green and then I thought once I got it on the board, it was a little bit too bright. So I mixed up some brown to incorporate in with it. And then I really liked the color of that. It can't, kind of gave it a rustic, really old looking uh, wood wiped off the extra. And then I have these graphics. I'm gonna put a full length graphic down the whole length of this board. These are in my Etsy store. I'm gonna stack the three of them on top of each other. They're all the same font, so it's going to blend in really well. Mod Podge Reverse Graphic Transfer, let them dry, gonna rub it off, and they should all line up and look really pretty down the length of this cutting board. Seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer, and this is another one that I really love. I just, I'm really not sure how many of these I'm gonna be able to keep. This might be another one. Now, if you don't want these to be all cutting boards, you can just do a long plank and do those three graphics stacked up on each other and they would look beautiful. The next one we're going to do is a crackle paint with the Elmer's glue. I want some really big cracks in this one. So I'm gonna put on quite a thick coat of that Elmer's glue. We're gonna venture away from that white and black and I'm going to do some black and red. I think this has a real farmhouse feel, that red color. So I'm going to paint that on top of the Elmer's glue and then we're going to let it set aside and dry and it's gonna crackle beautifully. I printed off this really bold antiques and that's what we're going to Mod Podge onto this one. And then we're gonna rub off the paper and we're gonna be left with a beautiful antique sign. Now this technique on the colored paint and with the crackle paint underneath, it's a little bit of an advanced project. If you put too much water on the graphic when you're rubbing it off, it'll reactivate the glue and it'll rub off. And with the color, it's a little bit trickier to rub all that paper off, so you have to really take your time and do small sections, but love the way that it turned out. And there you have all kinds of ideas and inspiration that you can do with these cutting boards. And like I said before, these are my best sellers right now and they're so easy to create. And you can just do a little bit of a twist on different styles and different designs and create some beautiful home decor. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you've seen some ideas that you'd like to try out. I would love to know down in the comments which one was your favorite. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.